So I've showed you a very simple um, common emitter amplifier. But if you take a look at schematics, you'll often see something that looks like this. There'll be, there'll be some extra things down here. And so let's talk about those extra things and why they might be there. Now, I'm not going to teach you the math behind it and how to select it and everything. It depends on lots of things, and there's tons of textbooks that'll tell you how to do that. And it gets way too involved in what I would like to discuss. I want to give you an idea of why they're there and maybe what would happen in a particular circuit if you're trying to troubleshoot it and stuff like that. All right. So we're going to set up some type of biasing on the uh, input and set this at a point where the thing's happy. Now, uh, if you don't have this down here, then uh, there is problems with the transistor with temperature or with frequency or part-to-part -part variations and things like that. So anytime you design a circuit for your garage, you might have a different set of problems. But if you design something for a product, you have to make sure it works over temperature, over voltage, over all kinds of different conditions. You need to make it kind of bomber proof, right? And so you do that in a couple ways. One is uh, by adding this resistor. Now this is called the emitter resistor, okay? In a typical NPN transistor, there is an effective resistance of this emitter. There is a voltage drop here, and that kind of relates to a, a kind of a, a fake resistance. It's around 25 ohms, something like that. Um, typically in these little small signal uh, circuits and stuff, it's around 25 ohms, but it can vary. It can vary for all sorts of different reasons, and so that variation can cause your signals to not have the right gain or to not work right and stuff like that. So you want to put in a circuit that is not reliant on this emitter. And you do that by adding a resistor. Now, if this is, say, 25 ohms and you add 250 ohms, well, now this is 10 times bigger than this. So if this thing causes any trouble, you know, this time this thing's 10 times bigger and your, your problem will be one tenth of what it used to be, right? And so typically these resistors here are even maybe around 470 ohms, you know, they could be quite large. And so they're much, much bigger than this. And so they, they make this circuit a lot more repeatable. We'll put it that way. Okay. There's a problem with doing it this way though. Um, well, let me add another, another input is that adding this uh, also increases the linearity of the part as well. It actually makes the part the happy region that makes it bigger. And uh, so the linear region is extended by having this resistor in there and stuff. So um, it also creates a, a negative feedback, which, which, which uh, is not intuitive. And I'm not gonna go into that, but uh, uh, you can read about it, uh, how, um, how this can actually help uh, the, the uh, uh, distortion, okay? The problem with adding this resistor is now that some of the current flowing here will create a voltage down here, and that voltage will subtract from this voltage, and so you won't get as much gain. The gain is kind of roughly like a ballpark seat of the pants type thing. It's this resistor over this resistor. So if this is 10K and this is 1K, the very maximum gain you can get out of this thing is 10 to 1, all right? And so it reduces the amount of gain that this stage can have, all right? Um, it helps in a lot of ways, but then it hurts in one way, and that is in gain. Now, you can make the gain better by doing this. Now, what does that do? Well, we're worried about two things. First of all, we're worried about a DC bias, and so the capacitor does not do anything with DC, okay? So you can imagine it's not even there for DC. So just these three resistors set up the DC uh, bias point. But if you add this, it adds an AC ground. So any wiggly here gets to go directly through this capacitor to ground. So a DC path might see this 470 uh, ohm resistor, but an AC path will still see the 25 ohm resistor. And you can kind of say, well, that kind of defeats the purpose of all those other great things you just said. But um, it actually works out that this fixes some problems and then this unfixes some things and together they work well together. 
and, and that's as much I want to say in this video is that's why they're there. This is, makes it nicer and this makes it have more gain. Okay. And I'm going to show you an example of how this adds more gain. All right. So I have a little, uh, little circuit over here that I built on the breadboard and it's that it's, it's the circuit that I just showed you on the, uh, on the piece of paper there. All right. So here's what we have. We have, uh, the yellow line is the input and the, uh, and the uh, blue line is the output. So you see, we have maybe a gain of two or three, not much, right? Very little, very little gain here. Uh, let's see here. Two volts per. So it's actually one to one. So right now, these are both two volts per division. So actually it's not doing any gain at all. All right. We have a, we have a one to one gain by, by having that resistor in there. All right. Um, now what I'm showing you is this circuit here, uh, without the, uh, Hello, focus. There it goes. Uh, without this capacitor. So I'm showing you just this. So these two um, resistors are about the same value. And so it's giving you about a gain of one. Okay. But now I'm going to add that capacitor. All right. So let's take a look to see what that does here. All right. We're going to hold it there and I'm going to hold it right there. And there you go. So we've added gain. All right. So by adding that capacitor, now we have a gain of, let's say, uh, maybe a gain of four or five. Um, and so it helps a lot. Okay. So if you're uh, troubleshooting a circuit and you're not getting any gain, maybe you have a bad capacitor, right? And that's kind of wanted, why I wanted to show it to you. A lot of times you'll, you'll look at these, uh, you look at these circuits and say, well, yeah, I've, I've measured all the DC voltages and everything looks fine, but you're missing the AC path. And so if you have that bad capacitor there, or it has a bad solder connection or something, uh, yeah, you're not going to get as much gain out of it. And just in case anybody's wondering here, are the values that I used, uh, 4.7 K, 1 K, 4.7 K, 1 K. Uh, one microfarad and then some 0.01s. Um, so uh, the big the big takeaway again is why why is this down here? Uh, the one K helps the stability of it, and uh, the uh, one microfarad increases the gain.